Christian Living 101 presents a Bible class on the fundamental basics of victorious Christian living. Establish a strong foundation for conquering the trials and temptations of daily life. Increase your faith and learn to use the powerful weapons of spiritual warfare as you study with Pastor Gene Applegate. Enjoy refreshing worship and celebrate communion with us each Sunday. Now we join Christian Living 101 in progress. No more darkness, no more night. 
Father, we come into your presence in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be talking today, Lord, about that great day of your return. And Lord, I pray that even as we minister to these people today, as we divide your word and we begin to look at it and take care to understand what it means, oh God, let the power of your Holy Spirit surge upon us and through us. Let us be saturated with the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom uh, as directed and revealed unto us uh, by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, let your word come to life in our hearts and let us see the depth of its truth and Lord unveil unto us the hidden mysteries of the last days that we've not yet seen and help us Lord to accept that which we hear today as being that which you can bless and that which you can use to change the hearts and lives of those who are unprepared for eternity and so Father we commit our way unto you and we ask for your mighty anointing upon us as we preach and teach your word this day. Now, Father, we commit all of the things that we are to talk about today into your hand. We ask you to guide us by your Spirit, and let that which should be presented come forth with clarity and understanding. And Lord, let us have the compassion and the love that would cause others to know that Jesus Christ, our Lord, can be their Lord as well, if they will yield to his love and to the privilege that they have to come before the Heavenly Father purged and cleansed because He paid the ultimate sacrifice at Calvary for our sin. And so thank you, Father. We ask you to bless this message and we give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be studying a subject today that may be a little bit exciting. And on the other hand, if you're not really living where you ought to live for the Lord, maybe it might be a little uh, discouraging. It doesn't have to be. Because you see, the wonderful Lord and Jesus Christ that we serve, our Redeemer and Deliverer, is one who will allow us to come unto Him, and He'll wipe away all the sin and condemnation that we have gathered upon ourselves down through the years. And of course, as I've taught you in the past, we know that uh, we are born in sin. Uh, we have sin from the moment of our birth. And uh, as a result of that, the old carnal nature rules our lives. And Jesus Christ came to deliver us from our bondage and from our condemnation and judgment. And you know, we Christians today that uh, are really looking for the return of the Lord get somewhat excited because of the uh, signs of the times and the things that are going on round about us. And though they may seem very discouraging in the natural, uh, we have to remember that um, those things have to take place uh, prior to the coming and the return of our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. And so actually, when we see uh, the problems that the world is facing, and especially our land here in America and the problems that so many people are having now, uh, we begin to recognize and understand that indeed,
indeed it is uh, a time for us to look up and to begin to expect the return of our Lord and King Jesus Christ. And so we speak of that as the great day of the Lord, the day when he comes back to take authority over all sin and and evil and ungodliness and puts all uh, rule down uh, uh, of those who are filled with evil and iniquity and and he just takes over and turns this land into a place of peace and and a righteous government uh, we look for that and we get excited about it and we talk about it but there's another side to the coin and that is are we really ready for his return are we really as anxious for him to come back as we think we are. And I want us to be reminded that this old pastor has one obligation, and that is to give you the Word of God pure and straight. And the Bible tells us in uh, the book of Malachi chapter 3 something that all of us need to hear and understand. And if we're not prepared for the return of the Lord, it's time for us to take inventory of our life and begin to come to that place of decision and full 100% commitment unto the Lord. In other words, it's time to decide who we're going to trust. Are we going to trust the God of this world, the gods of this world, uh, to rule and to reign and to provide for us? Or are we going to trust Almighty God in heaven? The Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who uh, gave his life that we might have life and shed his blood that we might be cleansed from sin. And we need to make a choice. And I'm going to challenge you today uh, as you listen to me that uh, you'll know why it's important to make that choice. Let's go now to the book of Malachi chapter 3. And I'm going to be reading in verse number 2. We're talking about the great day of the Lord, the Lord's return. It says here, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now you say, Pastor Applegate, now what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that it isn't all going to be glorious and wonderful for many uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. I'm not talking about the ungodly, atheistic heart and, uh, that is hardened against God. I'm talking about the house of God, uh, those who have not come to the point of yielding themselves unto the Lord, repenting of their sin, and walking in the cleansing power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and righteousness before Almighty God. And you see, the situation is that when Jesus Christ returns, yes, indeed, there's going to be a remnant, and that remnant is going to be ready, and they're going to be prepared, and they're going to be watching for the Lord's return. But there's also going to be those of that remnant that are not prepared and they're not ready for the Lord to return. And when he returns, the Bible says he comes in the twinkling of an eye, and that it will happen quickly, and there's not going to be time to make restitution or repentance or get baptized or any of those things that many of you have put off for a long time and have not made the decision you ought to make in really committing yourself wholeheartedly 100% unto to God that you might be ready when the Lord returns as he promised in his departure as he was lifted into the air the clouds covered him and he went into uh, the heavenlies to sit at the right hand of the heavenly father and so I want to prepare you and warn you and try to encourage you that it's time to make some real decisions for Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, who are you really serving now? And how faithful are you in your commitment to walk in the righteousness of God as you live day by day? 
As we look at this verse again, I want to go back now to verse 2 in the book of Malachi 3, and it says, But who may abide the day of his coming? What's it saying? Who's going to be able to stand the day of his coming? Who's going to be able to handle it? Uh, who's going to be able to receive it with joy? And who's going to be unable to receive it because of fear and condemnation uh, of their unprepared heart to receive the Lord? Unclean, impure, compromised in their position before the Heavenly Father. Uh, they once walked close to the Lord. Maybe you're one of those people. Uh, they once made commitment unto God and, and uh, served Him faithfully, uh, but became discouraged and distraught, and uh, perhaps something happened that made them bitter and mad at God. Perhaps you're one of those people. It may be that they just have been indifferent and so caught up in the responsibilities of this world that somehow or another they've just neglected to really hone and to uh, bring a crisp fellowship in their relationship unto the Lord. They've just sort of ignored the Lord and, and become complacent in their heart and their thinking and, and they've just let the days come and go and they go by and one comes upon another and all at once uh, here we are today and it's been a long time since you had fellowship with the Heavenly Father and you had that uh, sweet uh, knowledge of peace and truth and faith in your heart uh, uh, because you knew that you were redeemed and cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you don't feel that anymore. Perhaps you're one of those. And so if you are, I want you to listen to me today. If you aren't, and you can honestly say before God, everything is right in my heart. I know that I'm prepared for the return of the Lord. I shall welcome Him with rejoicing in my heart. Uh, and you're one of those that can honestly say that. Then you need to listen that you might be able to prepare others and encourage others and cause them to come into that point of, of commitment, 100% commitment unto Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ our Redeemer. Now there's not one of us that does not want peace upon our land and uh, a happy presence uh, without the power and the forces of darkness and sin constantly harassing us and bringing many into bondage because of their ignorance or their uh, callousness, their interest in the things of the world uh, become greater than the things that the, they should be interested in in the spiritual and the heavenly uh, promises of God and His covenant and so uh, uh, the ways of the world drag them down. The ways of, and the desires of the carnal nature uh, get the best of them. And if you're one of those people that has to honestly say in your heart, uh, you know what, uh, when I see this scripture and it says, who is going to be able to abide? Who is going to be able to handle, if you please, in our vernacular today? Who is going to be able to accept and be prepared for the day of the Lord and His great return unto this earth when He comes to rule and to reign? And so it is, beloved, if you're not ready, it's time to get ready. And I want to take you on now into the uh, inner part of this second verse, uh, and we're going to talk about it for a minute. It says, Who shall be able to stand when he appeareth? You know, I've heard a lot of people say, You know, Pastor, when Jesus comes, I'm just going to run up and hug him. Well, I doubt that. When Jesus comes, the brightness of his glory, even if we're prepared and ready to see him, anxious to behold his face, and I know many of you who are listening today are, even though we're in that condition, the awesome of his radiance and his glory, his mighty power, uh, the awareness of his anger and his fury against the ungodly forces of hell, uh, and we begin to see Jesus in all of his uh, great glory, and power both to bless and, and to destroy I have a feeling that we're going to fall on our face before God and we're going to say oh God woe is me if there be anything Lord that you need to do in my life uh, I receive it now but I want you to know beloved it'll be too late then but we will be in a situation where we will stand in awe 
I don't know if you've ever been frozen in your steps uh, in, in an awesome situation where you become speechless and you can't imagine what you're seeing and it just seems like that beyond uh, uh, any way of comprehension or description, the situation is uh, spell striking and, and you're just frozen there. Somehow I think that's the way most of us are going to be who are ready to meet the Lord and we're going to see Him and we're going to see Him with awe and with reverence and with holy, awesome wonder as we behold His return. And so I'm saying to you today, if you're not ready, it's time to get ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it says that He is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Now I know I talked about that fuller's soap here a few weeks ago when we were talking about righteousness and I think it was David who cried out unto God and said wash me with fuller soap. Uh, you may not understand what that is uh, but that's a very abrasive soap that comes from a, a plant uh, and uh, it is uh, harsh uh, uh, it, to the body. Uh, it purges and cleanses and bleaches uh, uh, as it uh, uh, is uh, applied to the skin. It, it's, if you rub it, uh, it's uh, sort of a granulated kind of a feeling, a sandpaper kind of feeling, and, and it has a way of just scraping and purging every uh, thing that is unclean from the surface to which it's applied. And so here we find that the Bible is telling us that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Redeemer. Yes, He is. But it also tells us that He's our judge, that He is the one who tries us uh, as by fire, the Bible tells us. And uh, we know that He's the one that comes uh, with the cleansing that is not always pleasant to receive. But oh, how blessed it is when we become purified by that fuller soap, spiritually speaking, that the Lord Jesus Christ used. Uses, uh, when he begins to work on our old carnal nature and our errant ways in life. Let's go on and see how Malachi describes uh, this uh, a great day of the Lord. We hear now that he, he's like a refiner's fire. What's that like? A refiner's fire is that which is heated as hot as it can be heated. It's heated to the point uh, uh, that it melts uh, silver and gold and separates them from the dross and the dirt and the stone and the, uh, the debris that uh, they're encased in when you dig them up. And uh, it causes them to melt and to become refined and pure because everything that is impure uh, comes to the top and it can be skimmed away and all that is left is the purity of the silver and the gold. Do you realize that Jesus Christ is going to do that to those who are here that are His, to those of the remnant that have come to that place of commitment before God? He's going to purge us. He's going to put us through the reviter's fire. He's going to let us go through things that will test our faith, that will test our determination and our commitment. He's going to allow the a fuller soap effect, if you please, uh, uh, come and scrub us clean until we've lost all desire for the things of this world um, and our nature and desire to cling unto the things uh, uh, of the carnal life uh, are completely gone and we are purged and pure and we're waiting for His return. So, beloved, if you're going through hard places today, maybe you need to stop and consider that just maybe that is the fuller soap and the refiner's fire that's beginning to purge and to cleanse you and allowing the things and circumstances of life to reveal themselves in all of their impurity and he is trying to scrape them away, wash them away and then of course heat us to that point wherein all of the dross and the impurities that are within are poured out and skimmed from us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and we're ready and prepared for His mighty return on that great day of the Lord. Oh, you say, Pastor, that's fearful. 
It can be if we don't make determination within our heart that we're going to get serious about serving the Lord. It can be if we're so interested in the carnal life that we live here on this earth that uh, we have forgotten about the eternal soul of ours that will abide forever somewhere. If we're not prepared to meet the Lord, if we haven't been tried as by the fire and cleansed as by the fuller soap through the blood of Jesus, we're going to be in a terrible condition when he breaks through those clouds and returns on to earth to rule and to reign. And so I want to warn you, beloved, it is the last day. It is a time when we need to begin to consider uh, the great return of the Lord and that great and terrible day of the Lord. And we need to take a real deep look down within our own hearts and determine whether we really are pure and clean or whether we've allowed some of the uh, contamination of this old hateful, diseased, sick world, evil world in which we live to have a part of our life and to blemish us in our righteousness before the Heavenly Father and our returning King. So, beloved, I want to challenge you to remember what you're going through may be a great blessing if you apply it as you should and allow it to turn you unto God and say, Oh God, like David said, we talked about a few weeks ago, purge me and cleanse me and wash me and make me pure and make me clean. You know, every day that we arise from the bed and start a new day, it's a good time to say, Lord, if there be anything unclean in me, if there be anything, Lord, that shouldn't be there, God, cleanse me and purge me and prepare me for your return and prepare me to be an instrument in your hand that I might be used of Almighty God to warn my brothers and to help my family and, and to see to it, Lord, that the glory of God is presented unto those who are forgotten that they need to serve you and to live righteously in your presence. And oh, beloved, if we could come to that point where we understand what at risk and we could understand how important it is to prepare those uh, and to warn those who are not prepared uh, to get prepared that they might be in a good position and they might rejoice at the coming of the Lord rather than to walk in fear and trembling because of their ungodliness. Now let's go on to verse 3. It says, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. That great day of the Lord comes, and it'll come. Will you be prepared? Will you have been purged and cleansed? Have you allowed the refiner's fire and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ to mold and shape your life? Have you cultivated a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and your Heavenly Father uh, that would allow you to present yourself as that offering of righteousness? See, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about us going out and finding a lamb somewhere or uh, a calf somewhere. It's not talking about that, that we might offer it unto the Lord. It's talking about what kind of a position are you going to be in when you present yourself unto the Heavenly Father and unto the coming King, the Lord Jesus Christ? When you're confronted by the King, are you going to be able to say, Lord, I present to you myself, righteous and pure through the cleansing of your blood? Or are you going to be one who says, Lord, I didn't think you'd be here yet. I was going to take care of this tomorrow, but I didn't. Oh, God, help me. And so what are you going to do? You see, once he's here, he's here. And the purging and the judging and the cleansing and all of those things are at hand. And I'm not going to condemn you to eternal damnation the Bible tells us that the Word of God and the, your own conscience, your own spirit, the knowledge within your own heart will condemn you unto your judgment and you will not be able to say one word about it because you will stand guilty before God if you've not been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer.
And so I want to tell you, beloved, we all look up and we say, oh, God's got to come quickly. Look what condition the world is in and look where we are in this nation and look what's happening to our families and look what's happened in our churches and they don't preach the word anymore and they're, they're apostate and what they do preach is not true. And, and we look at all of that and we say, oh, God, uh, you've got to come quickly. But then I say, are you ready for him to come quickly? Are you ready to make that commitment unto God that when he does come, the Lord does return, that you can present yourself as an offering of righteousness unto him? And you can say, here I am, Lord. I prepared myself through your cleansing blood. I've walked in the power of your Holy Spirit. I've kept and abided by the word of God and the leading of the direction and the direction of the Holy Spirit to the best of my ability. And so, Father, I, I, I want you to know that uh, I'm ready when you send the Lord back and King Jesus appears. I'm ready to offer myself as an offering of righteousness unto him. Oh, beloved, I hope that you are, and I hope that you mean it when you make that commitment, and I hope that you begin to work from this day into a relationship with God and a submission to the Holy Spirit under the direction of the Heavenly Father that you might prepare yourself for the age to come in which we shall rule and reign with Jesus Christ as kings and priests governing a righteous world that has been freed and cleansed and purged from sin and the law of sin and death and all of its fruit. Oh, listen, that's going to be a great day. It's going to be a wonderful day for those that are prepared. But if you're not prepared, it's going to be a day of terror and fear and awesome trouble. And so don't complain about what you're facing right now. Don't complain about the hard places that you're walking. It may very well be that the Lord is allowing all of this to come your way. And the refiner's fire is at work. And the fuller's soap is washing. And he's preparing you. And so instead of becoming bitter or becoming frustrated or get impatient with God because he didn't answer your prayer like you wanted him to or didn't answer it when you wanted him to, Rather, why don't you look unto the Lord and say, Oh God, look at me. Let me see myself as I really am. Open unto me the things that you see in my life that perhaps I'm not even aware of. And Lord, let these things, whatever they may be, if you must use them to bring me to attention and to cause me to yield to your cleansing and refining power, here I am, Lord. I want to be able to offer an offering of righteousness to my Lord and my King when he returns. I want there to be no blemish. I want there to be total and wonderful expectation and acceptance in my life as I see him break forth and establish his kingdom in this old world in which we live. Oh, beloved, we do live in an exciting age and we do live in an opportune time. And if ever there were the signs uh, at hand that warn us and reveal unto us the span of time that in which we live, it is today. Because everywhere around about us we're seeing uh, the world uh, uh, coming into fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament and the prophecies in Revelation. We find that the words of Daniel are beginning to be unveiled and revealed. Uh, Daniel had many things he could have written. But you remember God told him to shut it up, not write it. It was for the last days. And I believe that God is trying to warn us and prepare us and equip us and cleanse us, establish us as great men and women of faith that we might be clean and pure and that we might offer unto our Lord a righteous offering, that of ourself. I pray you'll do that. And if you haven't made that decision today, I think it's important for you to make it. I challenge you to remember that the Bible tells us in Acts 2.38 that we are to repent and be baptized in water. 
uh, for the remission of sin. And, and then it tells us uh, throughout the scriptures that if we've made that commitment and we've accepted the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are to prepare ourselves uh, and that we are to learn of God. We're to listen to the Holy Spirit as He guides us into truth. And we are to walk before our Heavenly Father in purity and righteousness, having forsaken the way of sin and all of its fruit. We have turned unto the way of righteousness and its covenant promises unto those who believe. I challenge you to take that step today and do it quickly that you might be blessed and walk in peace and tranquility, sleep well at night, and not be worried about whether this is the last day before the day of the Lord or whether it's going to be a while yet. It doesn't matter because all is well with your soul. Now it's time for us to take communion and as we do that I want you to prepare your heart. The Bible tells us that we need to examine ourselves and we've been talking about that at length today. And if there's anything in your life that you know is displeasing to the Lord, if there are failures and shortcomings that maybe you didn't intend to have be a part of your life or experience it, but they're there and you know that God's not pleased with them, it's a good time to say, Father, cleanse me anew. Refresh me with the Word of God and with the purity of your spirit and and renew my relationship through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Purge away anything that's not right in my life. Because you see the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, beginning with verse 24 that we need to examine ourselves and judge ourselves so that God won't have to judge us in the future. And now I want to just read a portion of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and I'm going to read a portion here in uh, uh, verse number 26. Now remember verse 24 and verse 25, Jesus takes the bread in verse 24, uh, breaks it and shares and they eat together. In verse 25 he talks about taking of the cup and drinking of the cup and they do that together. And then I want to take you to verse 26. It says, for as often as you eat this bread and, this, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. I'm going to read the next verse. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, that means with guilt and sin within your life, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. That's what I've been speaking to you about, and that's what I challenge you to do before we take of the bread and the cup. I want to share this thought with you. When Jesus paid the price at the cross of Calvary by shedding his blood, and when he took the stripes upon his back, the whipping uh, post, and, and the torment of being led up to Golgotha's hill, when he endured all of that anguish, he literally purchased God's right to cleanse and purge and bless you and add unto you everything that you need in this life and provide for you the covenant promise of eternity with Him. And so I want you to take this opportunity as we take of the bread now and you can say, Lord, in a very quick commitment of prayer in your own heart, Lord, if there's anything there, purge me and cleanse me and wash it away. Lord, I have physical need. I'm sick in my body. I have a problem I'm facing. I have tangible things I have to deal with here, Lord. I don't know what to do. I want you to know that as you take of the bread, the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm convinced because of many other scriptures in the Word of God that He paid the price that your needs might be met both physically, spiritually, and indeed in every other area of life as we spend it here in this world. So let's take of the bread and as we take of it I'm going to ask God's blessing upon it and we'll eat together. Heavenly Father we recognize that this bread represents the broken body that you bore for us 
the stripes on your back, the torment, the thorns on your head. Lord, all of the anguish that you went through, you paid for us that we might have all things that we need from you and from our Heavenly Father. And so, Father, as we take this bread, whatever the needs of the people are, I pray that you'll meet their need as they eat together with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us eat together. Now as we take the cup, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that we were born into this world in the bondage of the law of sin and death. We know, Lord, that in spite of our ability and desire and hunger to do the right thing, that our very carnal nature causes us to walk in imperfections, unholiness. And Father, we often commit things that a person of God should never commit. And so, Lord, as we take of this cup and drink it, we ask you, Lord, if there be anything in our spirit that needs to be cleansed and purged, that you will cleanse us afresh and that you will renew us to perfect peace and righteousness. And, Lord, that as we drink of this cup of communion with you, we ask you, O oh God, to help us to be ready for your return that we might offer unto you an offering of righteousness, indeed, our very self. And we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who paid the price that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us drink together. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Now Stephen Spaulding is going to continue our service as he sings for us, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, it's my plea Daily walking close to Thee Let it be, dear Lord, let it be Dear Jesus, take my hand Oh, take my hand Lord Jesus, take my hand There's a race to be run There's a victory to be won Every hour, give me power to go on
my feeble life is o'er Then time for me will be no more Guide me gently to that shore To your kingdom shore To your shore Just a closer walk with thee Oh, grant it, Jesus, it's my plea Daily walking close to thee Let it be, dear Lord, let it be Let it be, dear Lord, let it be Well, I must go. I have to say God bless you, and I trust all is well with you. And I pray for you that you might be uplifted and blessed as you seek the Lord and prepare yourself for the bridegroom. Because, you see, we are his bride. And who wants a blemished bride? He's coming for one that is pure, clean, faithful, and yielded, yes, and yielded to Him and to His Spirit. Think about it, do something with it, make some decisions, and by the grace of God, I'll see you again next week. Good day. God bless you. You have been listening to Christian Living 101 with Pastor Gene Applegate. Christian Living 101 is independent and listener supported. We are not associated with any other ministry and your prayerful and financial support is deeply appreciated. Send all correspondence to Christian Living 101 P.O. Box 72150 Phoenix, Arizona 85050 Our email is Gene at christianliving101.org That is Christian Living 101 P.O. Box 72150 Phoenix, Arizona 85050 The email again is gene at christianliving101.org